Greetings all and welcome to another session of Speaking Through My World. Today I want to take us through the steps of obtaining a protection order in South Africa. Now the reason why I want to discuss this is that there's just a lot of mixed and incorrect messaging that does go out in terms of what our rights are when wanting to obtain a protection order and what the steps are. Just so you know, this information that I'm sharing with you comes from various NGOs, but most of it comes from the South African Police Service website. And the reason why I'm, I use that as one of my main references is that a lot of the time, uh, victims and survivors, when they want to open up a protection order at a police station, they're turned away. So let's start from the beginning. A protection order is basically a court order saying that if somebody who is, has abused you, uh, the abuser, which will be known as the respondent, um, this is an order to, to ensure that they don't come near you and they obviously don't harm you again. This is very, very essential in terms of domestic violence cases, in terms of, of, of intimate violence cases, and just, it's supposed to provide protection for people against those who want to hurt them. So, the steps to take. Uh, first of all, when it does happen, and, and unfortunately, it's, it's, a, it's a weird and very difficult thing to say, but when the abuse does happen, the best is to collect as much evidence as possible. And the reason for this is that when you do go to the court and you have to prove that this person has beaten you or this person has sexually violated you or harassed you or, or raped you, you have that evidence. So if it is uh, a bruise, if, if there was a witness, get that person's statement, uh, any, any form of evidence to prove your fact. So what you, what you need to do is go to a police station, make an affidavit, and this is a, just a testimony of detail, detailing all of the, the events that happened on why you need a protection order against this person. It also helps if, if somebody also witnessed the abuse, if they wouldn't mind also giving a supporting affidavit, which then of course supports what you're trying to say. Uh, before we get into the intricacies of the police station, um, one of the, the, the tips which other lawyers have given me when, when I needed to, to, to go and make an affidavit and open up a case is that <clears throat> because the, the content is emotionally driven, it might be wise for you to sit down and jot down everything that had happened. So if the abuse happened over, over a period of time, jot down the date that it happened, how it happened, where the person hit you, how the person hit you, how the person harmed you, um, how they harassed you, how they violated you. Put all of these points down and put it into a chronological order. Then write up the, the affidavit itself at home. Then when you go to the police station, you've written it out, your, your thoughts are clear, everything is there in point form, and you literally have to hand it over to the police officer, and, and they should then write that affidavit word for word, verbatim for what you've written. Now, the problem that, alive, that arises in a lot of our police stations, and we need to address this, is that number one, when you want to go and, and, and make an affidavit and get, and get a protection order form, you're often turned away and saying, no, you need to go straight to the courts. According to the South African Police uh, Service website and according to other legal representatives and other NGOs that, are, that, that I've spoken to, is that you have every right to open that affidavit at that police station and get the necessary form before you go to the court. Hand over the, your information about the affidavit and the policeman or policewoman should then fill, fill it all out. What happens also is that for some reason there are certain police persons who feel that they should maybe be a counsellor or or try and be a middleman in the situation and, and start to question your intention and question what has happened to you. They have no right to do that. A police person's responsibility and job is to protect us. So when you go in and you ask me for protection, yes, they need to ask the specific questions about what happened, where it happened, um, how it happened, where you were hurt, and you've already got that written down, but they cannot question anything else and, and also... Um, not suggest 
uh, a sit down or or they contact the 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 alleged abuser or the respondent in this case and so forth so you go into the police station you've already written up your affidavit you hand it over to them you make your the affidavit you then ask for the protection order form take that home read through the form if you have time in between but it's always better to read through so you understand and the terminology, you understand what they're asking for, you've got your supporting documents. If, if the, the abuse happened and you, and, you, and you happen to have had a med medical record or, or a doctor saw you, put those into. So as much evidence that you have res um, surrounding about this, this, this case, the, the, the more you have, the better. You then take it to your closest court, and what you will be issued with is an interim protection order, and this can happen at any time. And what happens with an interim protection order is that with the accompaniment of the police, you can then go to the alleged abuser, or as they call the respondent, and inform them of, of this. But also at the same time, a suspended warrant of arrest is issued on this person. So on this interim uh, protection order, it's given all the details about the person, about the person who's viola allegedly violated you and so forth. And there's also a date on there which both of you will then have to appear before a judge and then the court will decide if a, a permanent temporary order will be issued. But in this process, in this process of the interim and, and the final protection order, the court will also issue a suspended warrant of arrest against the alleged perpetrator. This is to ensure that the person doesn't try and intimidate you, try and harm you, so that they don't get to the court. And this is where a lot of... A lot of um, Additional abuse does happen, which often leads to femicide, which often leads to death, because remember, abuse is about power. So when you go up against your perpetrator and you've brought in the law and you've brought in the police, they've realized that they no longer have power over you because you found the power in your own voice. So what happens in this situation, in most of these situations, is that the perpetrator will then try and silence you, and in most cases, the aim is to silence you forever. So in between the interim protection order, the, the alleged abuse is then issued with, with, a, with the interim protection order, with the details of the court, the court date, and so forth, plus there's a suspended warrant of arrest, and if they violate that, then they need to be arrested immediately. On the actual court date, the judge will then decide if the evidence that you've given um, is sufficient and warrants for, for a permanent protection order. So that is why you need the, the supporting documents. So if there's, as I mentioned before, if there's evidence, if there's uh, witnesses, their supporting affidavits will help. If there are medical reports, all of these different things, psychologists' reports, counselors, and so forth, this will all help in terms of getting their permanent protection order. If it is then granted, then obviously the person um, is not allowed to come near you, is not allowed to touch you, and if they violate that, they are supposed to be arrested. We know in South Africa that doesn't always happen. If it's a case of you are living with somebody in their home and you need to, to collect your belongings and, 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 and personal items, the magistrate of the court will then instruct the police to accompany you so that obviously you can do it without being harmed. So guys, I hope this has helped. Um, and once again, uh, the reason why it was so important for me to talk about this is that certain police stations operate on their own capacity, not abiding with these specific laws. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this of the session, is that this information was um, obtained from the South African Police Service website, which is saps.gov.za. So if this information is going out and it's on your website, why are we getting conflicting information from various police stations? This is something that our government really needs to look at, especially since we live in a country where gender-based violence is a crisis. Femicide, we're in a crisis. Johannesburg is known as the red capital of the world. So if this information is going out, surely every police station should abide to what the law actually says. If you need more information of this, please just send me an inbox or go to my website and send me an email that is rosymoderna.biz. I can also, I've also formulated um, all of these in, 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 in black and white into a document along with copies of what a protection order looks like so that you kind of 
get an idea of what of of what is expected and 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 what 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 you need to write down and so forth until then be safe speak up in safe spaces and remember your pain is valid thanks for listening <laughs>